and could lead to better medications for diseases like Alzheimer's. Dr. Alan Magaziner from the Magaziner Center for Wellness is here to talk more about this. What was your reaction when you first heard about the study? I found it very interesting. First of all, I mean, memory is such a difficult thing to conquer. I mean, we all run into this problem as we get a little older. This is a medication, or actually it's a naturally produced substance in our hypothalamus uh, in the brain. And what it does, it's responsible for remembering uh, places, people, and objects. And what they found now in rat studies is that by using this hormone, it may actually improve and change the memory from short-term into long-term. So whereby we may not remember some of the short-term things, this, this hormone that's naturally occurring may actually improve our long-term memory. I did hear, though, that this hormone, there's a possibility it could increase cancer cells from growing. That is a concern right mm -hmm. now. So we don't recommend anybody starts injecting it at all. It's called IGF-2. It stands for Insulin Growth Hormone 2. And uh, we don't recommend anybody start to use it. Uh, we need to run research. human trials, absolutely. All right, second story I want to talk to you about is the FDA releasing a report today linking um, breast cancer Im or implants to a form of breast cancer, rare form. Very, very rare form. Uh, in fact, there's only been 60 reported cases of this breast cancer, and it's called anaplastic large cell lymphoma. And um, basically, it's been shown now that there's cases that might be triggered by some of the implants, particularly the saline implant and the, um, the silicone implant. So if a female is noting, and it often occurs many years later after the surgery, anywhere from 1 to 20 years later. Wow. So if you're noting any pain, swelling, or fluid accumulation around the breast area, you need to consult with your physician. Can women with implants go have a test, um, any kind of blood test, to see if they have Not this yet? Not at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have to, the doctor would have to do what's called an aspiration, which means drain the breast tissue and send it off to the pathology lab for diagnosis. All right, last story is Michelle Obama visiting some military uh, outlets and she was very amazed that they had in their mess halls healthy, nutritious meals for the soldiers, putting the soldiers through these rigorous exercise routines that work on the core and she, this is all part of her uh, plan to, you know, educate young kids that this um, military um, program might be a good example. What do you think? This is great. This is fabulous. And I think it can be a great example, not only for the military, but for the youth of America. There's many more people now who are not even qualified to be in the military because of their weight problem. So if we can use the military as a, as a model for the rest of America, uh, hopefully our youth will learn from this and get off the couch and get off the iPods and all the computers that they're using, mm. start eating properly and start exercising more effectively. Let's keep our fingers crossed to fight the obesity totally. epidemic. All right, Dr. Allen Magaziner, thanks so much.